Would you like to live your best life possible, regardless of your imperfections? Discover cutting-edge tools and inspiration to let go of your limitations and expand your life beyond what you've ever imagined. On Imperfect Brilliance, we help you tap into your unique gifts and talents, uncovering and letting your brilliance shine. Join certified facilitator and coach Betsy McLaughlin as she delves into different areas of your life to get unstuck and create the life that is truly possible for you. Betsy has changed her life by utilizing the tools and techniques she is sharing with you. What if your willingness to acknowledge your brilliance is the catalyst to creating a new reality? When you stop judging you, what else can you create in your life and in the world? Join Betsy live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern to create magical and joyous possibilities for an hour of laughs, questions, tips, and more. We are excited to contribute and play with you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Imperfect Brilliance. I am your host, Betsy McLaughlin, and I am here today with Lale Hancock. So welcome, first and foremost, welcome Lale to the show. Hey Betsy, so glad to be here. Thank you for being with us today. And the subject is sexualness. And what if it's not what you think it is? Uh, So it's, and what is it? What have we learned about it? Where is it appropriate? Where is it not? So what this will be a, a really fun conversation and a very different one about maybe everything that we thought we knew about sexualness isn't what we thought it was. So mm-hmm. that's our that's our topic for today. And a little bit about Lale, you guys. So Lale is an ardent change agent. And, you know, she actually, I I mean, I know a little bit about the different things that Lale is involved with and the different businesses that she's contributed to. And she has a desire to bring global wellness to the forefront of everyone's awareness, everybody's life. And she actually has a company that is called, uh, with a website, globalwellnessforall.com so go check that out you guys and she so she what has she done she's done so many different things she is a seasoned executive she's a lifelong entrepreneur she has she's committed in both her professional and her personal life to empower others to inspire and recognize potential, greater potential in themselves and to create wellness in your bodies, in your life, in your business and beyond. So Lale is, she's also a certified facilitator with Access Consciousness. She is in a bunch of different specialty programs as well including, and I might not remember all of them, so help me if I forget any, Lale. Uh, <laughs> conscious parents, conscious children, right? Um, joy of The joy of business, of being uh-huh. you certified facilitator, and yep. um, right, let's see, is it right riches for you? Well, now it's right. called Wealth Creators Anonymous. Wealth Creators Anonymous. Right yeah. voice for you. What else? Yep. <laughs> right body for you. Conscious horse, conscious rider. Um, I mean, I... <laughs> talk about a smorgasbord of choices and possibilities. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. It's fun. You know, I, I, it's the wellness. It's the oneness, wellness of all of us, right? It's every part of our lives. It's every part of our living. And it's every part of our present and future. It, it totally is. And they really are. And they they merge together. Yes, they're like separate in one way, but they are so 
intertwined in really so many aspects of our lives. And then Lale also is a mom to twin girls. So she's got she's got that going on, and you know she travels the world, facilitating and contributing to businesses. And so with all of that, Lale, this conversation today about let's first start with what is sexualness, and then we'll go from mm-hmm. there. <laughs> well, I can tell you, when if you would have said to me like past eight years ago, you know, like if it was nine years ago, you would have said to me sexualness. The definition I would have had is what I learned in school or I learned from others. And it really had more to do with this thing outside of you, you know, like the looking sexy or, you know, the way you walked or, you know, like it just was more of these actor outside of you factors. And how forbidden it was, you know, you shouldn't be sexy at work. You shouldn't do this. Um, You shouldn't do that because then you might get raped or whatever. Like there was all these (laughs) shouldn'ts. And Mm -hmm. when I came to Access Consciousness, one of the things in the foundation, which is pretty much the second class that you might take um, for some people, was really describing sexualness. And it's this healing creative, caring, generative, expansive, nurturing, like that space of when you feel good, you know, and that orgasm feeling, you know, not just have to be a good sex, but like when you just even have the sun on your body and you feel good. So it really opened up a whole new world of like all the judgments that I was aware of being a woman in a man's world. You know, I worked in technology for many years. And looking at all the places, I wasn't willing to add the sexualness in my life. But yet, if I did, how much more my life and the businesses would grow. So, you know, I don't know. I I said that most of us have definitions of sexualness from childhood. You know, Mm -hmm. what was appropriate or not appropriate as a little girl or as a little boy to be or do. Right. Right. And so as your definitions of what sexualness is, you know, like really expanded, what did that contribute to um, different aspects of your life? Well, I mean, just think about one aspect is the creative aspect, right? So Mm -hmm. Anything that you're looking to grow in your life, whether it's more wellness in your life, whether it's more, you know, um, improving your relationships, whether it's at home or at work, whether it's coming up with a new project or a new class you're going to facilitate, like your creative energy are actually part of that. So, you know, not only is it something that enhances just more joy in your body, but it also enhances the expansion and the growth of you and everything in your life, everything in the world. So it's just one of those things that I think most of us, when we cut off the sexualness, we're actually like looking at ways that we kill our body. (laughs) We kill the business. We kill our relationships. But when you actually are willing to be the sexualness you are and keep adding that to your life, then that's actually when you're growing and expanding your life. So for people who might still be going to the the constriction feeling when they hear the word sexualness, yeah, what what tips could you offer for somebody who kind of goes to that? uh, uh, You know, we're not supposed to talk about it. We're not supposed to, you know, what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just want to describe, you know, right now is a time of quarantine, right? I'm actually Mm -hmm. quarantined in Portugal. You're in America. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, like, look at the factors of our lives right now. For me personally, being inside, I really have been so thankful for technology. I've been able to keep the businesses still going, even though they've really altered themselves, not being able to physically be at events or Mm -hmm. be able to travel. 
Um, the one thing for me, though, that has kept me healthy, that's kept me actually have like joy and not go into depression is being able to walk outside my hotel, like literally right outside my room and walk with nature. So walking in nature, you know, nature, do you ever worry about anything when you're in nature or does everything melt? Your brain melts, your body relaxes, the stress you had melts away and mm -hmm. your creativity expands. So whether you like the word sexualness or not, would you be willing to actually allow you to receive more from that tree that's outside? Or right now I'm looking at two orchids that are on my table, okay? Flowers and animals and children and trees, like they don't shut off their sexualness. And neither mm. did you or me when we were younger either. I don't know what it is. Somewhere we hit puberty and all these rules and regulations with our bodies and we start to flourish and that's when we go into the judgments based on other people <laughs> that we need to turn it down, we need to turn it off, we need to not be sexual, we need to not do this. But like, if you really think about those moments, how creative do you become when you start to look at the beauty of a flower? Or, or you get a hug from someone or you get, your animal comes and crawls right next to you and just snuggles mm -hmm. with you. That is sexualness. It's just from a different world than what we've identified it to be. I love that response. Thank you so much. And it, it goes right back to the initial explanation that you said with the creative, caring, healing, nurturing energy that it really that this energy is that we're talking about and everything you just brought into that the the animal snuggling with you outside you know the flowers the plants the the earth everything all combines right and to get working together to contribute to you in this effortless way that is yeah. it really truly is so beautiful and even just talking about it you you can tap into tap into it and just kind of you you can sense your body going ah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i mean just i i'd like to invite the listeners like you know it's funny i um i work with businesses and i also work with families and other people in the communities and mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but there is this like projection that we need to become responsible. And part of becoming responsible is not to have as much fun, not to be as joyful, not to um, be as playful. Mm. But have you noticed the moments at work where you're the most productive is when you're laughing or when there's this moment yeah. of relaxation that happens between you and a colleague or you and your clients or, you know, it's that space of you actually being you, which invites this caring, generative, expansive, nurturing energy. And what it does is it actually makes your body come alive. That's what sexualness is, is that living energy inside mm -hmm. your body. So when you are willing to actually have more of that living energy, look at how different you create. Look at how different those days are with the productivity at work, with the way you interact with people, whether it's at work or at home. There's just more relaxation and more play. And so I always invite people. I'm like, do you remember when you were three years old? <laughs> You know, when, like, the world didn't have to be so serious. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was. It was play and fun and curiosity and no judgment. You didn't care, the kid down the street, what they wore. You didn't care what house they lived in. You just wanted to play. And that's what happens. When we're in judgment, we actually cut off our sexualness. We cut off our natural being alive. And when you're willing to actually go into gratitude, 
you know, the opposite of judgment, you know, the two that don't coexist <laughs> together. When you're in gratitude, when you are in that joy, you're actually at that higher frequency of energy. And at that higher energy, you can add more to your life. You can add more to your relationship. You can add more to your finances. You can add more to even being able to not just tolerate your kids, but have fun with your kids, you know, especially as teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I love this conversation too. And I wonder, you know, how much more we can invite into our lives with this nurturing, expansive energy that you've been describing and we're, you know, looking at anywhere that we have shut it off, yeah. what can we do to turn it back on? Yeah. And, you know, when we say turn it off, most people haven't turned it off completely, right? It's not like a faucet that either mm -hmm. it's fully open or fully closed. Like, right. it just might mean that there's moments you're willing to have more of that in your body, um, your, your moments you're not willing to. And I actually have, like, a tool that's, that's one from Access Consciousness, and I, I loved when I actually um, learned this tool. It's called the five points. So there's five points in your physical body, your energetic body, and there's two at the groin. There's one at your, like, belly area, like your solar plex, and there's two underneath your armpits. And you just say, five points, turn on. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious if any of your listeners noticed anything. And if you didn't, it's not wrong. It's just, like, just play with it and see. It's like building a muscle with this one, like, when you let go your head that you're not supposed to do this anymore, you actually allow your body to show you how quickly it can turn on these, these five points. And okay. it's the five points of being alive in your body. Like if you're waking up and you're like, oh, my God, I had such a long night. I didn't sleep much, blah, blah, blah. You know, before you get out of bed, just for a moment, just put your feet firm on the ground and say, restoration of communion with earth, restoration of communion with earth, restoration of communion with earth, and see what happens, how much more alive you become. You're at work mm. to say five points, turn on. And it is, it's like you're re-inviting those energies that you actually are with the earth to turn on. Love it. So I'm, I'm curious, Betsy, how did that work I for you, it. turning on I the five it. points? It's like, okay, here's, here's what is up, and here's our first break, you guys. And, you know, well, while we're at going to break, ask for those points to turn on in your body. And we'll be back with some, I'm sure, some more tips and wonderful conversation with Lale Hancock in just a couple minutes. Thanks for listening, guys. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. The student asks the teacher, how do I experience transformation? The teacher replies, when the student is ready to receive deeper answers, the student then asks, how do I know what deeper questions to ask? And the teacher replies, when the student decides to commit to a practice inviting transformation, level two questions will be revealed. Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, and as a teacher and host, I'm inviting listeners to enroll in the Mastery of Transformation by joining me on Decide to Transform, your bridge to level two answers, Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. 
social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ag Council. Welcome back to Imperfect Brilliance. This is Betsy McGlarson here today with Lale Hancock. And right before the break, she talked about activating five points on your body. And my body just like lit up. It was so <laughs> fun. So thank you for that reminder. Well, hey, that was really fun. And did your body get happy too? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know what I love about this particular tool is that, one, it's easy, and two, that you could do it for you at any moment. Anytime you need, like, a little boost of, like, wake up and have more energy, because it is, it's like, you know, with everything going on, the more we think, the more we go into all these places of judgment, what we're actually doing is slowing down our own energies, you know, our own feeling alive energies. And mm. so with that, you know, um, you're actually reactivating that sexualness that's just alive in your body and waking it up. So, yeah, and definitely don't do that thinking about somebody else because, you know, that might not be good for you to wake them up. When you're, when you're happy and joyful and playful and it's such an inviting energy for others. And I know for me, when I'm, you know, it's like if I'm going to a party or, you know, a room where there's a bunch of people and you're drawn to people who are laughing and having a good time, enjoying themselves. And, you know, so having that, what is, that's such an invitation for others to, you know, to choose that for themselves and to play in that energy. And for, it, it really is a contagious thing. So mm -hmm. how much fun could we all have with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's within you, you know, it's not like it's medicine you have to take or, you have to go do something so extreme, you know. It's just something that's within you that throughout the year, somehow, somewhere, by something someone said to you, you know, society or your family or whatever, like you just started to tone it down. And by you just doing this five points, like I wonder what else that might create for you with the ease of your life, you know. Because when we're alive, that juice, that creative juice is so different than when you're like feeling awful or upset or stressed and you're trying to come up with creative ideas. That's so true. And it's funny, right before the show started, Lala, you know, we said hello to each other and she asked me how I was. And I was like, I'm frustrated. I'm, just, I'm beating my head against the wall of, you know, some technology <laughs> stuff. And she was laughing and say, well, it, you know, it sounds like a good time for a conversation on sexualness. And it was maybe bringing some of that energy and might change things. And we were just laughing about it. It's like, yep, time to stop. And, you know, I don't feel frustrated anymore. I don't feel like I'm beating my head against the wall. And so I love that really you can, you could do it even when you're having computer problems. You know, how could you use those energies to turn something where you're feeling that frustration, like, ah, you know, into something different. And it, it, like you said, Lale, and I love how you put it, it it's not something outside of you it's not a medicine that you have to take it's it's you you are that energy and so um what else would you like to share with us on this this is such a fun conversation thank you oh my god thank you you know like i i want to actually bring it up because sometimes when we're thinking about 
when we're thinking about sexualness, it's so easy to go into like, okay, you know, I haven't had sex in a long time, or, you know, I couldn't wear this clothing because it was too sexy or something like that. And I just hear that all the time of like moms who had babies and it's like, you know, it's like before the baby, they were willing to actually be more, I don't know how to describe it, but just there was a different kind of aliveness in their bodies. And then, you know, once they have the baby, it's just like, it's almost like it's inappropriate because now they're the mom. So I'd like to invite everyone. What if it's not about an age thing? What if it's not about a man or woman thing? But that each of us, like you said, from within us, have natural, innate, we'll call it, innate sexualness. And with that comes the giggles, the laughter, the, you know, like I was saying earlier in terms of that nurturing energy, you know, the one that is the creative, it's the um, caring, you know, just like I said, the animals, like, it really is like animals are so caring. They don't turn off their sexualness. Like flowers, they never turn off their sexualness. One of the reasons that we feel good being around flowers is because of their sexualness energy. So I'm just like inviting people, like if we really looked at it very different than the way we've been entrained to look at sexualness, like mm-hmm. truly what else would be available for us? I mean, I wonder how much more your business would grow if you were doing it from joy and from curiosity and that generative energy than to do it from the stress and the struggle mm-hmm. and the problem. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, like we talked about a little bit earlier, when you're in that joyful place everything flows easily when you feel like you're hitting your head against a brick wall you know how much harder does everything become and that you know whether you're doing something for work or you know something in your personal life or whatever it is that you're doing you know and then what would you rather create and have for the energy of your day and your life yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. You were saying when you hit your head against the wall, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how can you create? Like, right. we, it, it's really interesting. Actually, you can create. It just may not be creating what you desire to create. Um, <laughs> You know, what? like in Access, we talk about it. Your point of view creates your reality. And your point of view is whether you think something out loud or it's something that you're just thinking or it's something that you don't even realize is what you've defined. That's what mm-hmm. you're drawing into your life. That's what you're drawing into your business. So if your point of view is that, you know, it's difficult, you have to, there's a problem you have to bang your head against the wall for something, you literally will bring in that same frequency. That's the only thing you can match is that frequency of that. So you're going to bring more challenges. You're going to bring more difficulties with the technology and everything else. But if you're willing to say, even, hey, five points, activate, turn on, or whatever you want to say, or if you just say, hey, what if I just stop for a moment and just, like, look at a funny video Look at a little baby smiling, you know, or like an animal doing something silly and see how fast your frequency changes, that energy Mm -hmm. changes. And then you could say, okay, so what else is possible here? What have I not considered? Because a lot of times when technology is not working or something's not working in your life is because there's a different kind of awareness that's coming or that maybe it needs you to ask a different question or maybe needs you to look at it from a different angle than what you've been focusing on. That's so true. And and the, one of the things I love about it is it can be so quick to change. Like, so I, I had the awareness. I feel like I'm hitting my head against the wall. It's time to stop. And then 
you know, I do, I did ask the question because I could sense that I was getting frustrated. I'm like, okay, well, what el- in that wonderful question, what else is possible here? I started actually giggling at myself that I was feeling this, you know, frustration. I'm like, oh, well, good. The radio show is coming on. I'm going to take a break from this. I'm looking forward to this conversation. And, you know, I put my attention and my energy somewhere else. I asked the question. And literally now, whatever it was that wasn't working, I'm now having no problem with it at all. And that, of course, makes me laugh even more because I'm like, okay, how does it, and, and that wonderful question, how does it get any better than this? We're truly just by shifting my energies to something else, it, it just like solved itself, whatever it was. <laughs> and, you know, how yeah. many times? Do we do that, you know, and so that little tweak of your point of view, creating your reality, and then as soon as I realized, I was like, Ugh, like, oh, wait, you know, I don't have to go to that, that place, I can choose something different, and boom, you know, a few minutes later, and it, it, so this, yes, it's a, it's a small example, and how many times can we use this in everything that we're choosing and being in our lives? So it was kind of funny that it came up right before the call. <laughs> I'm sure it had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Thank you, Radio you Show, know. for the contribution, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. So the yeah. the piece of... Uh, where we went before I, we kind of veered off here that I'd like to go back to is where the the piece of judgment and where somewhere we do start to feel like, Oh, we're not supposed to have that feeling, you know, like somewhere Mm -hmm. and, and it starts, who knows at what age and it's throughout all of our society so we yeah. learn to feel like it's wrong to have certain feelings, and then that just gets, you know, mishmashed into a whole bunch of different thoughts, feelings, emotions, and everything. So with this conversation, with the nurturing and the sexualness and the caring that all of this is, what can you what questions can we talk about that could contribute to the listeners like playing with this for themselves to see you know where else they could ask questions on this subject yeah Yeah. um it's interesting when you said like the whole judgment thing like i know like it's younger and younger every day like from when we were growing up you know, I would say it was probably right around like 11, 12 or 13, like where, you know, we start to, women start to get their menstruation and, you know, like their, their breasts start to develop, you know, there's just things that are happening that really alter them being a little girl or a young girl to Mm -hmm. this, you know, this thing that we're supposed to become immediately. And, and I, I, it's interesting. Like I look at, you know, the kids of today versus us growing up. It was yeah. so different. The rules are so different. What parents had to do and not do was so different. And yet I still see how many kids, like how many people I end up working with through, you know, the workshops that I do or through the private sessions or You know, just even in business, like how many people I work with that, like they lose the drive, they lose the drive or creativity and they come to me or they lose their voice at work or at home and they come to me. And it's like, Mm -hmm. this craziness of the lies, the lies that, you know, um, like I know for, for myself, I was... I was a executive in the technology industry for a long time and for a very long time in businesses, it was just me as a female executive. 
And I remember just how even the projection that, oh, you're a woman, did you sleep your way, you know, to the top and things of that sort, and then how quickly I would go into the defense to defend Mm. that it wasn't my sexualness, that it wasn't that I did anything that got me the job other than it was me, you know, having the skills or doing the hard work or, you know, like justifying being me. And yet today I get some things are different, but not a lot of things are different in the business arena anyway. And how much of that is this, misconception of what sexualness is. And if we allow ourselves to forget everything we learned from our parents, to learn everything we learned from society, and start to trust us and our bodies. Because your body will know. You know, like when you put on something, whether it's jeans or a t-shirt or a bathing suit or whatever it is, like you just feel good in your body. Mm-hmm. That's your body saying, yeah, baby, we've got sexualness going on. Mm -hmm. And it's not for sexualness for anybody else. It's that we are alive. And now's the time to celebrate being alive. I love that so much. And it really is a time to celebrate being alive. And I'm wondering, too, you know, we obviously we're both women. And so we're going to have way more of a perspective, a perspective from a women, woman's point of view. And I'm wondering how this whole conversation on sexualness, you know, what conversations you've had f- with men about what that is for them. You want to laugh? I literally had a conversation like two hours ago with a man about this. And we ended up doing a, we we just started a new business together and it's called, <laughs> Um, doing, I'm sorry, dating done wrong or yeah. (laughs) That's fun. (laughs) And so we have this whole new program. Yep. And we were actually talking about this, you know, like, like, um, we were, we were joking about like, you know, how if a man says something, it means something, you know, or if a woman says it, then it's okay. It's appropriate for a woman to say certain things, but then if the man said the same thing, you know, it would be wrong. And so, like, we were actually talking about sexualness, which is so funny how this has come up today, you know, that we're having all these conversations. Um, but we really started to talk about it, and he said, you know, it's so funny when when we don't shut down that level of sexualness in our bodies is when we're actually the invitation for other people, whether it's men, whether it's women, and then we take away that separation of man versus woman, you know, and right versus wrong. So Mm -hmm. it's, I, I actually get that the, unfortunately, you know, I think this is one that hits all sexes. It hits all ages. Actually, that's not true. I think kids of today might get away with it a little bit longer. Like if you're a three-year-old, it may not affect you as much, but start to get like seven, starting school, eight, I don't know. I think I think it really is one that affects, you know, I'd say seven, eight-year-olds till they're like 100, you know? Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, what else is I, possible there? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I would like to have a little bit more conversation about men when we come back from our second break here. I Thank think you. we're about ready to go. Yep. So you guys are listening to Imperfect Brilliance with Lolly Hancock as our guest today. We'll be back. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. 
Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Hey hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey Bobo. Do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Imperfect Brilliance. We're having so much fun today talking about sexualness with Lale Hancock. This is Betsy McLaughlin, your host for this hour of Imperfect Brilliance. And before we get back to the show, Lale, would you please tell everybody how they could find you if they wanted to have more conversation with you or just check out your website, et cetera? Oh, sure, sure, sure. We're all over social media, so Instagram or Facebook for globalwellnessforall.com, or you can um, look me up for Meet Lale. Meet Lale, and it's L-A-L-E-H, in case you're wondering how mm-hmm. to spell her name. And That's my true. website is creatingyumminess.com, and I, too, am on Facebook and Instagram, and We're pretty easy to find, and we're so grateful that you are listening to this conversation today. So what else, because I know, right, I kind of asked you the question right before break about men and conversations you've had with them and sexualness. And, you know, because for girls, you know, we definitely have certain things that we start to think as our bodies change. And, you know, so for boys and and for men and, and things for them. Um, you know, what conversations is, is, was there more that you wanted to add before we went to the break on this? Well, you know, like once again, I think there's this difference of sexualness from what we've been taught, which may not really be the truth, um, more of a definition from this reality than what it really is. So it depends on which one you're looking at. Um, When I speak with men, by the way, I have a specialty. It's called conscious vagina. And with that, um, we end up having workshops and seminars um, actually, you know, around this topic. And we've had men who come. And it's to me, it's so beautiful to watch the transformation that happens, whether you're a man, you're a child, you're – because I do have kids who come to this class – or a man or a woman, you know, and the level of men feeling better about themselves ex- expands, you know, this whole sexualness, you know, like think about it, how often as men, they're allowed to, to people know that they have different kinds of needs and, you know, things that happen when they become, you know, 13 year olds, 12 year olds and stuff like that. Um, but yet there's so much judgment about it. There's so much judgment of what they're supposed to do and not do so much judgment, not to get a woman pregnant, not to do this. Like there's just so much projected judgment Mm -hmm. on men and it really does affect it. Um, so when you are willing to remember what if one of the greatest gifts about you is that gift that you are with the earth. Remember the whole walking with the earth Mm -hmm. going, whether you're sitting next to the tree or watching the flower or whatever it was, and allowing that 
to bring more life into your body and into your world and into your life. And, you know, um, I don't know, like for me, the conversations I've had with men, it's been so beautiful just to see how they don't go into wrongness the way they used to. Mm. And like we talked about when there's judgment, you actually kill sexualness. You cut it off. So, well, you know, moving away from judgment and being grateful instead. That's beautiful. And that's actually what I was going to say as well. Sorry, I thought you were done speaking. Um, Is when you see no matter who it is, you know, man, woman, child, when they're being themselves and there's not a speck Mm -hmm. of judgment in their world, it is, it's, it, it's that same energy that I was talking about earlier where you're just drawn to like, oh, what are they doing over there? What, what fun are they laughing about? Oh, I'd like to be part of that. You know, it's that same, like, in the, for me, it's such an invitation energy to be with people who aren't judging themselves, who aren't enjoying themselves, who are loving loving the the skin they're in and and just loving life and it you know wonder for all of us how much more can we create of that in our own lives and then where does that ripple out to others yeah and you know one of the greatest actually tools i would say is being you and being you really is that sense of joy and gratitude and fun and curiosity and so Mm -hmm. the willingness to be in the question like no matter what's going on we all have that there's days that are easier to laugh or smile than it is other days right and so those days where you don't those days where there are those complex things that are going on or there's difficulty like those are the moments to actually pause and ask some questions You know, just ask, okay, what information am I aware of here? What can I be or do different to change this? And for me, one of the things that I found is gratitude. If I'm willing to find one thing that I'm grateful for, grateful for me, grateful for the flowers, grateful for the earth, grateful for my kids, whatever that is, like the one thing that you're willing to be grateful for will automatically take your energetic frequency from where you are and will increase it to where joy is. And gratitude is just one of the easiest ways to get out of judgment. Mm. And yeah, so what questions, you know, we love talking about questions on this show Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. talking about how questions empower you. And so what questions could you be asking if you find yourself going to a place of judgment? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it's that space that I just described, right? That's really the first place that I would go. When there's gratitude, judgment cannot coexist. But if you can't remember the judgment, okay, just even the asking the question of, okay, what else is possible here I haven't even considered yet? Mm -hmm. Because then you automatically go out of the problem. You go out of the, I have no choice to actually give you choice and give you ideas, give you creativity. And then if you're willing to just say, hey, what's right about this I'm not getting? It's really become one of my favorite things during Corona. (laughs) And the moments that you don't even think there could be something right about it, something good about it, what ends up happening is you get awareness of like, wow, like what appears to be this thing that is a problem actually is one of the greatest gifts and it occurred exactly the way it needed to happen so that something else greater could be accomplished. Um, How does it get even better than this is my other favorite tool. And I know you guys have probably heard it a million times, but it's just so my favorite tool. It is, it is. And then my other is that, you know, for me, it's partnership with your body. Your body and you get to co-create together. Your body's your best friend. And if you're willing to even ask, hey, body, how much more space 
can we occupy so we're no longer affected by this, whatever it is that you're affected by or have some problems with or anything that's going on. And you'll notice that, you know, when, when you go into a problem, do you notice you tense your body or are you relaxed? Yeah. <sighs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So just by saying, hey, adding more space to anything, hey, how much more space can my body and I occupy? You just immediately allow you and your body to relax. Mm -hmm. You allow you to expand so that you will be aware maybe of the problem, but it's no longer something that's impacting you or affecting you. Mm hmm Yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite go-to questions, you know, and how expanded out um, do I have to be to not be at the effect of this? And it's like, oh, right, you know, I don't have to be at the effect of it. It just, it's such a great reminder that we can, by simply by asking questions, change what's going on. And so that's, I love that, you know, that can it really be that simple? You know, I still could find myself asking that question sometimes. And then mm-hmm. giggling, you know, that, yeah, it actually can be that simple. And, so yeah. the, you know, because your logical well, mind goes to, well, it's just asking a question. How could that really make a difference? <laughs> totally. And, Betsy, let's not forget the five points that we learned at the beginning of the show. If they're willing to just say five points, turn on. It's as easy, fast, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. So what else can we add to this conversation as we round out our time together, which has gone by so incredibly fast? Um, to Is there anything that you had wanted to bring in that we haven't talked about yet? or? Well, just gratitude, I think, is one of the things, especially with what's going on in the world right now. Just if you could even have some gratitude for your body, um, because anything we have gratitude for really exponentializes the same way as acknowledging. And if you can look at, there's nothing you've ever done wrong, even if like you've been judging you or judging other things, like it's not the wrongness. It's really focusing now on, okay, I have a new moment. I have a new day. It's a brand new canvas that I get to create with today. Mm. Now, what would I like to choose? And body, thank you so much. Thank you for being here with me. And thank you for everything that's actually possible for us to create together. Because it is the moment that you are in gratitude, you can no longer be in wrongness or judgment. Mm. Well, and the the question, you know, what could I choose now, brought in an energy of before the tools of access consciousness, I just kind of went through life thinking, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like the, what is that? um, Oh, the wheel that the, the hamster wheel, right? The hamster wheel. Oh, yeah. And I had, I definitely had that point of view that that was my life, you know, get up, it's another day, blah, 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 you know, and it was the hamster wheel. And so that was, that's what I thought my life was. So that's what I was creating. And if, if I had heard, well, what could I choose now? I'd be like, well, I don't really have much of a choice. This is my life. So if anybody's, you know, having that thought, what questions could they ask and what, what tips could you give them to try something different? Well, you know, One of my favorite tools is called interesting point of view. And when there's thoughts that come up that are the difficult thoughts or something someone says kind of triggers something inside you or, you know, Mm -hmm. there are the difficult moments or whatever is going on. Just some moment of, like I said, if, if you're like, okay, what's right about this I'm not getting, just that initiate it. And then just if you say interesting point of view 10 times, So interesting point of view, I have this point of view. (laughs) Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. (laughs) Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. That was only five times, but do you notice, like, 
Like we started to giggle. Like it's like it takes away the significance and the wrongness yes. of whatever else is going on and actually puts you in this neutral place that it doesn't have to be right, doesn't have to be wrong, it doesn't have to be good, it doesn't have to be bad, but it allows you to start receiving the truth and have the awareness and then say, okay, now what else can I choose? What else? with create creator here for me, you know, or what are these other options we haven't even considered yet? Like it mm-hmm. just puts you back into that creative curiosity mode instead of focusing yeah. on what the problem might be. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if I had had that tool when I would think, oh, you know, I'm on the hamster wheel of life. If I had had that and started saying interesting point of view that I have this point of view, you know, and saying it over and over until there's like, oh, maybe there is something different possible. And that's really what these questions are designed, you know, is to is to have you say, oh, maybe there are other choices and possibilities available. Lale, thank you so much for being with us today. What a pleasure it was to play with you. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Pleasure is always mine. Thank you, honey. All right, guys, take care. And remember those five points, Lale Hancock. What a wonderful treat today. Thanks for listening to Imperfect Brilliance, you guys. Have a wonderful week.